Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly. So we have here to look at a Toyota Hilux. Obviously we've got uh, another Subaru here. Johnny's going to have a look at that one. So we've got this Toyota Hilux to have a look at. Okay, so this is the engine we're looking at. I think it's a 2.4. So this has been to the dealership more than 10 times, you ten said? 10 times, yeah. 10, ten times. They, 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 had it, they had it in last week. Yeah. Uh, it's done nine miles before the allowance ran right again. They put new injectors in it this time, they said. Okay. And I said... So what have they done before? Show, show me the thing from Toyota that says it needs new injectors. Oh, I can't show you that. It's confidential. Okay. You know. What else have they put in it? They've, they've, they've changed the DPF. They've changed the sensors. They've changed. They've put new injectors in it. Okay. But they... I, I tell you what happened. We we had it for a start and it ran perfectly. It kept regening. It, it, and then they had it in after about a, a year old for a um, what do they call it when they a do software the update. ECU? Yeah, software update. update. Yeah. Soon as they did that, it started playing up. They've done another three updates on it and it's got worse each time. Okay. On the original program, it was running perfectly, regening. There's something in the software that stops it regening. Hopefully not, because if it is, then I can't sort that out. Well, yeah, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. That's what, that was my guess, and yeah. I'm, no, I'm a farmer, not a bloody, yeah. you know. Okay. But they said it, need, it runs perfectly. Even when it says the DPF is full... It still drives okay. It drives first. It's not okay. smoking, it's not, the power's not down. Yeah, but okay. It'd be interesting to see what figures you get, and... You know, yeah, okay. Because at the moment it's saying that the DPF is that thing where it's underperforming or whatever they yeah, yeah, say it. Yeah. yeah, you press the button and it's got one square up and says DPS normal. Okay. So okay, so I'm going to get my launch tablet loaded up. So I don't know if you heard all of that, but yeah, he's been 10 times back to the dealership. It all started when it was, when it was a year old. Um, it's now three years old maybe um but yeah it's been persistent he said he's never had it m more than a couple of days with the engine light off every time it's been back from the dealership within a couple of days lights come back on okay so i haven't even started it up yet let's start it and see what warnings usually these have all the skid lights on yeah if you have a block dpf your traction control light comes on on these which is weird uh you've got that crash a crash awareness sign or whatever it's called check engine visit your dealer pre-collision system that's what you call it malfunction so all of that stops working your cruise control as well I think stops working same as the Reynolds so this is a uh, new model Toyota Hilux so where this story differs from ones I've done before I've done two other Toyotas and they were both saying so a few last month I done a Toyota Land Cruiser which was like I think it had 8,000 miles on the clock or something, but Toyota refused to do the warranty on that. Uh, they wanted him to pay for a new DPF. Uh, they refused to, to cover it under warranty because they said it, they, they thought it was down to his driving style. But yeah, this one seems to have, um, there's no problem with the warranty. There's just a problem of actually getting the repairs to work. Uh, so it's, it's had 10 different visits and 10 different repairs each time, changing different sensors and changing the DPF and changing the fuel injectors and all sorts of other stuff so we need to just try and figure out what's wrong and how we can fix it I'm hoping it's the usual but uh, if, it, if it is software like the customer thinks then unfortunately I can't do Toyota software updates or fix Toyota software okay so we're finished scanning P2002 uh, well P2002, it's not a P2463, so... Alright, my first off impression from this... If I was to guess, what I'd say has happened here is... They replaced the DPF too early. There was something something wrong with the software, or something wrong with the fuel injectors. But they replaced the DPF first, now the new DPF's cracked again. And after it's cracked, they've tried to replace the injectors, this, that, and the other thing, but... Now the DPF itself is broken. That's what I'm going to guess. But we'll go through it and see what's going on here. Okay, so looking at the live data, we have 2 to 3 millibars of pressure. 44% on the fill level. So yeah, I think I think this is 
This is a damaged DPF from the looks of that. Okay, so just get the engine speed up and um, we'll switch that back to, to that. Get the engine speed up to 3000 RPM. So we've got maximum of 24 millibars at 3000 RPM. So the pressure is way too low. Let's uh, turn the ignition off for a minute. See how we, see how we zero on out. Why is it saying not supported now? Okay, so we are sort of close to zero. So obviously we can have a look at the tailpipe, but the problem is here. Yeah, so that's sooty. Now that would normally be a confirmation that the DPF is broken anyway, but the problem is with this is it's already had a new DPF, so the soot can be from the old DPF. But looking at the pressure on this, it confirms to me that the DPF pressure is about half of what it normally is, so looks like the new DPF is broken. So normally on these, I'd be looking at this unit here, which is the fifth injector that goes into the exhaust system to heat it up. Uh, I'm not sure if that's been replaced or not. It's hard to tell if it's been opened or not, but it's quite a new car anyway, so it's hard to tell if it's a new part, but obviously that's it's a new DPF. Um, even though it doesn't tech necessarily look brand new, but uh, you know it's just raw metal, so it's it, again it's hard to tell. I'm going to open up one of these pipes here for the. This is the DPF pressure sensor. Pressure before the DPF on the bigger tube, and then the pressure after the DPF on the smaller tube here. Okay, so I've got that disconnected, and I've got my own meter connected up to that. So that confirms it's reading is sort of exactly the same as the pressure sensor. Okay, so what I'm doing now, just to confirm one thing, is I'm just triggering off a region of CDs. You can use a manual button. The manual button's not working because it's, since it says it doesn't need to, obviously, according to here, the DPF is empty. So you've got all these warnings on, not because the DPF is blocked, but it knows that the DPF pressure is too low, so it's an efficiency code. So this is, we've got these warnings, like I said, it's an efficiency code, which means the DPF is not doing its job. It knows the pressure's too low. A lot of these Euro 6 cars will also have uh, a particulate matter sensor that can detect if it's getting soot pass and basically that's what's happening here so it looks like I'm just testing is the fifth injector working the reason the way I can do that is by triggering off region and seeing if the temperature of the exhaust reaches 600 degrees it doesn't look like that's the problem because yeah we are we are about to reach temperature and I'll show you now so you can see here it's rising up, we're just, just getting to 600 degrees now at the DPF there. Okay, so we've we've done the regeneration process only for a couple of minutes just to see if it reaches a reach temperature. And we don't have a P2463 code, it's not a block DPF, it's a P2002 efficiency code. Which, and, it com and that confirms that we have efficiency fault because pressure is too low, like I said. The DPF is reaching temperature, there's no issue with the software that I can see. It's reaching temperature, everything's fine, but the DPF is cracked. And what I think has happened is Toyota have put a new DPF in it at first, then the new DPF is cracked, it's going back, and they've put a, probably put a new, a new fifth injector maybe afterwards, but I think it's been done in the wrong order, so it's put a new DPF on it, and they've sent them out on the road and then it's come back and then they've put new injectors in it and then they've done this and then it should have been done in the opposite order so new new fuel injectors or have fuel injectors tested then the fifth injector then the dpf basically i think that's what's happened here so we just use the launch x431 euro and you can go to the special functions and basically tell it it's got a new dpf which is the dpf the position value clear then we can clear the faults which, which I've just done and we should be able to read them now and there should be no faults now if we start the engine we should have no lights on but not for long obviously once once the vehicle realizes that the pressure is too low that will come back maybe maybe a hundred miles maybe maybe less something like that okay so Toyota might have a hard job uh, believing that that DPF is not working again but it's definitely confirmed. I've confirmed the DPF's not working. Um, yeah, so that's all you need. It just needed the answer on what it was, really. So it's been back and forth, obviously. I don't think maybe they don't realise. Just because it's a new DPF doesn't mean it's working. 
and this is the case here. So I'll see you on the next video.